Greetings YouTube, I am finally getting around to playing Elden Ring. Unfortunately, this is a big game. I knew it was going to be a big game before I put the disc in the machine. And so I've decided to break it down into parts and catalogue my journey rather than doing a more conventional review. I think it might work better. So I have no idea how this is going to go. We'll see what happens. Some people object to the phrase, prepare to die, in the same way that mathematicians object to the phrase, trial and error. It should be trial and improvement, they say. <laughs> this is a Souls game, prepare to fucking die. before all that, we have to pick a character class. Huh. There's only... three? Uh, also, what's with the pictures taking up the whole screen? Usually there's a like a drop-down list you can just pick from. I can't even see what these classes do. Oh, now I can! You have to press a button. That was weird. Actually, this whole screen is weird. The panels are too big, the descriptions are hidden, and there seems to be only three classes. I mean, they all look like melee builds to me, which for a starting class is very sensible. Solid foundation to work from, that's what I was going to pick. But usually there's more than... Oh. There are ten classes and the remaining seven are hidden off to the right hand side. Okay, I select a Vagabond class, choose the female-shaped body type, and off to the next screen, where we can change the class and body type. What was the point of that last screen exactly? I could get bogged down on this screen for quite a while, but let's not. Anyway, last thing I'm going to say on this bit, a lot of people seem to like the Samurai class. I honestly don't know if it's because of his starting equipment or his cool looking armour. Either way, he's very popular. And begin! Woo! Nice! Normally a Souls game is drab and dark and depressing, and this is immediately colourful and bright and... Yeah, okay, it's still dark and depressing in places. While you are online, there are bloodstains. Touch one and it shows you how that player died, which is handy. Huh. He just jumped off into oblivion. Oh, I see, he was trolled to death by a player's message. Players leaving messages that tempt other players into death. Jump down the hole, there's treasure in there. You jump down the hole, you die. It's a fine souls tradition. Something that's not a fine souls tradition. Jumping! Look at this! I can jump! I can jump! Hey, what about this for a trick? No more wandering to the very bottom of the stairs to climb them. Ha! And this is what I like to call the welcome wagon. This is the developer's way of saying, you're in a Souls game now, you're fucked. wake up in a cavern, there's a door in the distance, there's an item up on that ledge, and there's a hole with a ghost that tells you to jump in. Now, for me, the situation is obvious. The door is locked, the key is up on the ledge, and the hole is the method you use to reach the key. Apparently not everybody thought that. A lot of people saw the hole and thought it was a developer's trap. I have no idea why they thought this, 
because generally speaking, it's players that use messages to get you killed. The developers, on the other hand, will issue no warning whatsoever. They'll just drop it on you and you either sink or swim. Usually sink. So yeah, not a developer trap. The real kicker, of course, is the whole is actually the tutorial. And a lot of people missed it. Handy things to know, like how to two-hand a weapon. Skills. Sneaking. Yeah, you can sneak around now. And how to break an opponent's stance. This is particularly useful. Charged heavy or jumping heavy attacks leave your opponent potentially wide open for a critical hit. Shield parries and backstabs, no longer the only options. Oh boy, here's a fog barrier. Here comes a boss and oh my god, look at all the bloodstains. This is, this is gonna suck, isn't it? Sorry, did a fight just happen? That was the easiest Souls boss I have ever encountered. Why are there so many bloodstains? You, where were you even walking? You, stop pretending to be Sonic the Hedgehog. I reach the key and it's an emote. And the door just opens. It's at this point that I realised that jumping down the hole wasn't, strictly speaking, necessary. So I kind of kicked myself. Only afterwards did I realise that it was actually the tutorial, at which point, actually, I was pretty bloody glad that I played it. Especially to learn about the ways in breaking an opponent's stance and hiding in bushes. That would never have occurred to me otherwise. Touch the sight of grace? I'm going to call them campfires. Does anybody mind? Didn't think so. Woo! Sunlight! Colour! Brightness! Life! Trees! And I can see you over there, you golden horse riding bastard! I can see you! That! That! is what a developer's trap looks like. It's so bright and open. I'm not used to such wide open spaces in a Souls game either. Normally it's tight spaces and ambushes and it's dark. It's hard to see what's happening. Good luck ambushing someone in the middle of a field. Well, I suppose someone could be hiding in a bush, but it details. And there are eagles. Eagles perched on the rocks. And kangaroo things i think come to the lands between for the elden ring hmm? of course you have no shame in it unfortunately for you however you are maidenless you're maidenless and i'm assuming this is the source of the other meme There's a merchant in the ruined church nearby. And is it just me? Or does he look like Santa Claus? Oh, and if anybody is wondering at this point where the tutorials are, like I was, they're in your inventory. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me either. It took me bloody ages to find them. So, having bought some basics, and keeping one close eye on the golden horse rider, of course, off I go a-wandering. 
Oh, there's a turtle. Don't look at me like that. Far more concerning are the enemies you haven't encountered yet. You just don't know what they're going to do, how durable they are, how fast they attack, how they're going to attack. Well, there's only one way to find out. Okay, so it turns out these gas bags, I'm going to call them gas bags. These gas bags are quite vulnerable, ridiculously slow to attack, and can't move at all. The same can't be said of these bloody insects. Oh god, it's going to dizzy me to death. Stay still, you fucker! Thing you need to be aware of, or I would say it's good to be aware of, killing an entire group of enemies helps replenish your health and magic flasks. Yeah, normally you have to rest at a campfire to recharge your flasks, but here you can kill certain groups of enemies and it helps recharge them. It recharges them by various numbers, but... Does anybody else feel like the game is going a little bit easier on us than usual? Maybe? Another thing that makes this game feel different, crafting materials, animals, plants. This is, this is more like something Horizon Forbidden West does. The merchant I passed earlier sold me a crafting kit. It's cheap and the only way to make stuff. Get it. Now because this is an open world Souls game, the developer had to submit to certain open world trappings. Things like enemies that patrol certain roads and occupy certain landmarks. Shh. And because stealth is an option, you can hide in bushes, behind walls and disassemble entire garrisons without fighting head-on. Just be sure to move slowly, even while sneaking, otherwise the enemy will still hear you when you get close. And always keep an eye out for huge carriages that kind of remind me of a heavy metal hearse. They always have a nice shiny prize for you. Having cleared out the gate from ruins, it's time for the storm gate itself. Guards up ahead. Crossbows. First, I just got shot. Second, holy shit! I don't know what that is, but it's huge and I'm running away from it. It's not because I'm afraid of it, you understand. It, but because fuck fighting it in a narrow ravine surrounded by crossbows. I need it to come out of the ravine. Your father was a mountain. 
Your mother was a goat. NFTs are the future of gaming. It's worth mentioning at this point that I've added a grand total of two levels to my character and upgraded absolutely none of my equipment. I'm using a slightly different body armor I found on a dead guy. That's it. Does it show? Also, I was so close. Okay, second attempt and this time I have a cunning strategy. Fucking run! Run, 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 run! Ah, goddamn sonic blasts! <laughs> Nearly out. <laughs> That was close, but I made it. Now, let me stop here for a moment while I make a note on my computer of recent events for the video. Whoa, shit! Let that be a lesson, pay fucking attention. Fight some wolves, fight some goats. It, those goats are surprisingly vicious in packs. The map shows the direction you should be heading in from the previous campfire to reach the next one, in case you get lost. Hey! What the hell was that? A howl and a wave of wolves drop out of the sky! It's a new one on me. And rest up at the campfire. This, so far, has had elements of a Souls game, but has not actually felt a hundred percent like a Souls game. Stealthed my way past some enemies. And this is why the phrase is, prepare to die. Assume you're fucked and you'll never be disappointed. Ten seconds. Now it feels like a Souls game. This is Margarita. I could call him Margit, but Margarita was funnier. Most of the time, he clobbers me embarrassingly quickly. But sometimes I do start making headway, stripping more of his health off each time. I'm learning, but I'm not powerful enough. The spirit is willing, but the body says fuck it. On the 13th attempt, I actually got his health down far enough for him to warrant pulling the hammer out.
And at this point, I think to myself, I've got no upgrades or enhancements. I've got a whole two extra levels on my character using my basic starting equipment. I, I, I'm, I'm not getting past him like this. I'm, I'm not getting past him like this. I rest up at the campfire and I'm whisked away to the round table hold. But let's save that for another video, eh? There are moments when this feels like a Souls game. And there are moments when it feels like a Souls game finally devised a way of including an easy mode. <gasps> it, not that the game's easy, it bloody isn't. You want an easy Souls game, go play Jedi Fallen Order. But little things, recharging your flasks by defeating groups, more ways to leave your opponent open to a critical hit, many opportunities for stealth. Personally, what I could really do with next is a bow, some magic, a few extra upgrades both for character and equipment, and some lighter armor for flexibility would be nice. At the moment I'm clonking around in really heavy stuff. I honestly don't know how many more videos I'm gonna make. Could be another one, could be another ten, I, who, who knows, let's wait and see. I will have my arse handed to me a little bit more and there will definitely be a part two.